Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can apply some conditional formatting to your charts. So in this example in front of me I've got revenue growth numbers, uh, percentage changes year over year by different quarters. These are Amazon's growth numbers. And so if I were to chart this out on just a regular column chart, I'd get a single color that looks like that. But you know, let's suppose that you wanted to add some criteria, let's say I'll do something simple like identify whether it's a low period of growth, moderate or high. Now obviously you have the percentages here, so you could all figure that out yourself, but you know, let's do that as an example because you could also apply other criteria as well. I'm just going to show you how this will work uh, by comparison. So I'm going to start by creating additional columns because normal conditional formatting that you apply applies to cells, right? So you select a cell, you put in the rules, color scales, they don't really apply to a chart in the same way. And so if you want to do the same sort of thing on a chart, what you may want to do is just add some extra columns to help you along. So let's say I'll add one column for uh, low growth, then moderate growth, and then high growth as well. And then what I'm going to do is create some if functions to categorize these. So I'm going to say if this is less than 10% or less than or equal to uh, 0 0.1. If it is, I'll take that value. Otherwise, I'll make it blank. Same for the moderate growth. Actually, the moderate growth, I'll do last. The high growth, I'll say if it's greater than 30%. If this is greater than 0.3, then take this value. Otherwise, leave it as a blank. And then rather than doing an, an AND function, I'm going to cheat and say, okay, if or do a complicated one. I'll say, okay, if this is blank, whoops, and then this is blank, then under those conditions, then I'll take that growth rate. Otherwise, it'll be blank. So this way, I'll always have one of these columns filled in, right? So you'll never have an overlap because it's either going to fall into one bucket or the other. So now, if I were to go to insert, select my column chart, now Excel doesn't automatically detect this properly, so I, because I've got blanks here, I've made it a bit, um, a bit more difficult for it. So what I'm going to do is manually edit this. <clears throat> so I'm going to add my series, which is low growth, and that call, add that chart in there. Moderate growth, pull that in there, and then let's also add the high growth. And then I'll just adjust the axis here. So I've got the same labels. And once I change that, I've changed that for all of them. So now I hit OK. Now I've got something that you know has, has a bit more color to it. Now the one thing you'll still notice with this, though, that looks a bit off, is these charts take up a, a bit more space. They're thinner lines. And you'll notice this one is aligned to the right. And that's because it's really a placeholder because it's at most, we could have three series potentially on here. That's, that's how Excel is interpreting it. But we can change this by right-clicking, change chart type, and then use a stacked column chart. And the reason I use a stacked column chart is because now they're going to be centered because they're only going to take up one. It's only going to be one, one column chart per, per item here. And because there's only ever going to be um, either a low, a moderate, or a high. It's never going to be both or more than one. There's no danger of these numbers actually stacking. So I can I can cheat a little bit and use that um, column stacking, knowing that it's never actually going to stack. But this avoids running to that issue where you know you run out of space or your charts look um, not like they're aligning. And now what I can do is I can format my data series. I always like changing the gap widths to, to 50 just to make this a bit fleshier and get rid of some of that white space. And so at this point, all I would want to do is maybe just modify my colors. So like for this low growth rate, you know, I may want to use something like a, uh, a low, uh, a light gray. And for the moderate one, perhaps something like, uh, like green. And for a high growth, dark green. And just like that, we've added conditional formula, even though we're not going through the usual steps of going through here. So the advantage of this is, like I said, you've got the percentages in here, but you know, we could potentially get rid of them 
and still be able to get that information to know, okay, the, the dark um, green were over 30%, the light green were between 10% and, and 30%, and the light, uh, light gray were less than 10 percent but this can also work in other instances where you know let's say you've got different criteria maybe you want to highlight certain quarters like let's say uh, q4 should be a certain color q3 should be a certain color or if you've got other criteria you want to apply you can you can do that the key thing to remember is you know you just want to put them in these different um in different columns just so you've got every series being a different color because like i said with conditional formatting you're you're really limited to cells here and so right now, at least, there's not really the functionality to apply um, that same sort of complexity to, to charts. So the next best thing is to really create these sort of helper columns. And as you saw, it, it doesn't um, create a whole lot of extra work, but it gives you a lot more flexibility in how your chart looks. So that's a quick overview of how you can apply conditional formatting to your charts.